All right, you ready? I am. All right. Hi, this is Renee from Pop Culture Madness. I'm here with Kristen and this lovely gentleman. Would you like to introduce yourself? What's up? I'm Lee Vaught from Miss May I. Okay. Is this the... We were looking online at your tour dates. Is this the last one you have or you have more coming up? Did this you is, add some? This is it. We have some that's not announced, but it doesn't... They don't get announced for a long time. But uh, we have some more tours coming up, but nothing's announced, but... Yeah, this is it for this tour. Okay. Do you think Philly will be your favorite, your favorite show I'm so hoping. Far? I know it's sold out. Um, I'm hoping it's crazy. Um, I think so far, Norfolk, Virginia is my favorite. They were insane. So. Oh, why? Just good energy? Yeah. Really. I don't know what happened at night. It was just <laughs> chaos. <laughs> You guys have been touring the last album that came out. Um, well, in April, it'll be a year, yeah. right? So, like, is it currently work on any new material, or are you guys going to be working on new material? Uh, we're always working on new stuff. I'm hoping um, after this tour we might uh, do some stuff. Um, nothing's announced, really, but I think we have some plans on releasing some new stuff, hopefully, hopefully before the end of the year. Well, I mean, I love the fact that you guys have never been afraid to be experimental with things yeah, and, yeah. and try something a little bit different. What do you think might be in store for, like, the next time you have any <laughs> ideas? Uh, we, are, we already know. I think everyone thinks we're going to... It's hard to say what we're going to do and not, like, ruin the surprise. I think everyone thinks, <laughs> I think everyone thinks we're going to release this record because uh, the progression we've been out the last two records, but... Um, I think I was going to be pleasantly surprised with how it's co going to come out, so okay. we definitely throw a curveball. For any of our viewers that have never heard of you guys before, how would you describe yourself to them? Like, what would you describe oh, your music man. Like? Is that a rough one? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're yes, like, tough question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just like a metalcore band, um, we have a lot of thrash. It's hard to... We, we're very old school sounding for, I guess, modern metal. Um, I don't know. Just <laughs> long hair tattoos, circle pits. That's like our, our whole thing. Like guitar solos. Uh, we, just, we just like to play fast and have fun. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've seen you guys at so many different festivals. I mean, we caught up at Rock on the Range and Mayhem and Louder Than Life. And, I mean, I've always seen, like, it seems like the bang always adds a little bit of something different to the bill. Oh. And, like, you know, I, I definitely feel like, you know, rock music is put back on the map with these festivals and things. How do you feel about the current state of rock music? Oh, man. Um, I think it's... <laughs> it's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Melt my brain. Um... <laughs> Uh, I think it's really cool that metal bands, or I guess our sort of genre heavier um, screaming bands, um, are getting a lot more mainstream play the last couple of years. We've been on Louder and Life and uh, Mayhem and uh, Rock on a Range. Those are very mainstream radio shows, and for them to accept us and bands like us, I think it's really cool. So I'm excited to see the future of what the radio and mainstream is going to do for us metal bands. Well, that's what you kind of wanted to touch on, and, you know, Renee and I were talking about this in the car a little bit, of how a lot of bands now, especially within the, the metalcore genre, don't are, are not able to rely on the support of traditional radio yeah, yeah. anymore. You know, so I mean... How many obstacles do you feel like maybe have been in place because of that? Like, how much more do you feel like you've had to work? To, oh my gosh. To get people to hear, rather than just mailing some stuff in. We're, yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah. We have to tour way more, I guess. We have to, I think that's why we tour nonstop, is because we're, we're not playing on the radio and not on like truck commercials and just all this stuff. And so we have to really go out there and play. And, um, sort of, and if they don't like us the first time, we try to beat it into people's heads. That's why we tour so much. But uh, we get some radio play, which we're, which we're happy about. I, it's crazy to see, um, we get like ASCAP or whatever for being on yeah. the radio. And, it, and we're really like barely on the radio. And I can't imagine bands that are on the radio so much. Cause that's why I think I'm like, man, if this is our ASCAP, I'm like, I can't imagine if we were like a Ben Sim for or something. Like, that's crazy. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's cool that, um, even my mom said she we would never have guessed a band like us would even have like 10 seconds of radio play for so for us to even have spins is pretty cool mm -hmm. now how do you feel like are you guys very active on social media how do you what type of role does it play in just your touring your promoting your 
Uh, we love Twitter. We love Twitter. So I love Twitter. We'll, so. we'll be like at you tonight. Like <laughs> we want to at back. <laughs> I love Twitter and Instagram. I hate Facebook because I don't understand. I feel like you guys have, have like a million people following you for yes, somebody that hates you do. Facebook. You <laughs> certainly have a lot of people that like you on it. I don't even know how it works. Well, because it's stupid because I can't just say, <laughs> I can't just say, hey, what's up? I have to like pay a fortune. To oh, yeah. You See, you now that's the account. thing. The way their algorithm works now is exactly like that. If you want your stuff in front of those million people, it's like pay us whatever amount of money or else we're only going to show it to 200 and then be that's what you guys have like a verified page though too so don't you guys reach more people without having to pay more um yeah but there's still i think i know this is going to sound so like um (laughs) so stupid but when we post stuff, it'll be like, oh, you only reached 600,000 people and i'm like what's like 1.4 million i'm like i want to reach at least most of them, you know, like, no, I can totally understand million. it because, like, <laughs> we have like roughly 50,000 fans on PCM's page, and, and it's not verified, so it's right, like <laughs> but 200 people maybe see, you know, what I mean, yeah. aga dog amount, and Makes it's insane. So Right, because these people all checked like yeah. on there, and they obviously want to know yeah. what's going on. That's what, yeah. Like, I have a clothing company on there. I have like 14 or 14 or 15,000 followers, and. When I post something, it's like, well, 50 or 60 people saw it. I'm like, what's the point of even having Facebook? You're like, I can't why? Even talk to <laughs> what's going on with the clothing company, by yeah. the way? Um, we're just, we just sort of change stuff up. We do, well, I do have art still, so it's sort of like, it's like my little outlet, I guess. But, um, we, uh, we do monthly drops now. We did this, we did, we had a real store for one year, and, um, now we're back to online. Where's and, the store at? Uh, it wasn't Cincinnati. Oh. On UC's campus. So, it was cool, but online, mm-hmm. I guess... Now looking at it and reading about it, online's the future. So we had the physical store, but at the end of the day, most people will shop online. So, um, but it's been awesome. That's like what I. That's my main job when I'm home. I do that, and my wife does that. And um, yeah, I do. We do monthly drops, so I just design stuff all the time. And I think we release. We try to release five to ten items a month. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more, but five to ten items every month. So. And every, we all make everything once. Huh? <laughs> DD Plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we make everything once so it doesn't get remade. And every, it's a positive brand, which is really hard right now because negativity is super hyped up and f- mm. the fad right mm-hmm. now. So it's, it's been a pretty hard, like, last six months because it's all, like, positive slogans, but... Everyone likes to move upside down cross and like F. <laughs> right. But no, see, it's important to keep the positivity because yeah, I yeah. think we are surrounded by so much negativity it that crazy. like it's refreshing to see something that's positive. That's why I think this tour is really cool because we've been selling out venues and all the bands are like positive metal bands. It's, mm-hmm. I, I'm the only guy on the tour that like curses on stage, which I'm like, ah, so, <laughs> it's like part of our show. It's like mom's watching. You're like, yeah, oh, no. sorry. <laughs> well, because usually it's like us and a bunch of other bands are just like fucking circle pits all this and then when we're playing uh, I, all the other bands are they don't cuss and I'm like okay and then I come up and I'm like I got to it's part of the show do you feel like you get caught up in the moment with it though oh, like yeah, it's I just know. natural <laughs> once the intro starts I'm in like my own little world until it's over so, and can you talk a little bit about your interaction with fans? Because I've, you know, I've seen some stuff that you guys have done. I know that the that the last album was, you know, inspired by a lot of letters and things that you got from fans. Is there, you know, a memorable moment that sticks out? I'm sure there's been, you know, so many to to list one, but I, I just think that the interaction with fans is oh, awesome. Crazy story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's the wildest thing you got for us today. You know? I, I get that question all the time. I kind of think of the craziest fan thing. We have a lot of crazy, awesome fans. Um, I think one of the coolest. I think we got to see him on this tour. It's nothing too crazy and cool because I can't think of the top of my head. Um, we'll leave and then you'll go. Oh shit! <laughs> I know, I, I was like, um, there was uh, well, there's this guy in Milwaukee. I think it's um. This isn't that crazy. I feel bad. I'm letting you guys down. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, oh, here. No, I'll, I'll say a story. That, okay. You um, make one up real quick now. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not made up. It's, I'm, it, I'm not personally on this. Uh, my drummer, Jared, told us the story. He met this fan. But uh, I think we were in Germany and um, we were playing like a military base, or by a military base. There was a lot of uh, U.S. soldiers there. And um, this guy was telling Jared how he was a fan and he listened to us on patrol. Which is awesome. Like we always love hearing that. But he works. He worked in helicopters, 
and he made a lion, or he made our symbol like a oh. stencil. And he he said he's been he said he's not allowed to, but no one knows. And he's been uh, putting his symbol on uh, bombs. So. <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've been putting, uh, he's been putting our symbols on bombs. Oh. Like putting them in the helicopters. And I'm like, So you're dropping what? bombs. <laughs> I'm like, Our symbols on like bombs that get dropped on people. And like, that was probably the craziest thing because I would have never, when we're making a symbol, we're like, Oh, this means a lot to us. But I never thought it'd like, I hope one day it's going to bomb. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's, like that's a lofty kind of, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Like, I'm like, that's, that's crazy, but it's pretty cool. Next CD, you just have to have her be like a bomb. Like, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> the military like, symbol in it, too. Like. <laughs> That'd be awesome. What is it like, though, for you as an artist to know you've had that kind of effect and your music, your words have had that kind of effect on somebody? It's, it's you know... I always tell people it's it's crazy because it's not what you expect. Um, when we write the songs, we, like, write them for us five dudes and that, like, we're having fun writing them in the little circle that we are. We'll write a song, we'll be in a room this big, and you're like, wow, this is cool, it sounds cool, and then you put it out into the world. And then, yeah, and like, <laughs> change, people get a tattoo, and it changes their lives, it saves their lives, it did this, it did that, and you're like, I totally did not expect that. I just, I thought it sounded cool. So, like, <laughs> like you're to like, me, it rhymed. Like, you know, yeah, like, to me, like, it, it means a lot to me, and it was gonna, like, be crazy for that. But, um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it still blows my mind every day, um, but yeah, it's it's cra It's there's no words to describe how that feeling is. It's crazy. So I mean, we talked a little bit about getting caught up in the moment on stage and everything, you know, and you're looking out and seeing all that. Is it ever hard, you know, especially with a lot of you know heavy material in songs, even that you know there's positivity. Is it ever hard to get in and out of the headspace? Is there any rituals you guys have pre-show, after show? Uh, before show, we. Um, uh, before show we do like we like sort of like stretch I know it sounds really dumb but we like stretch <laughs> together and we have this thing where we all have to like it's sort of a good luck charm we all have to fist bump before we play and um, and then we just talk about uh, our thing is we want everyone when they leave to be talking about Miss May I so that's like our little thing we say before we go on and then um, afterwards I usually take like five minutes of like don't talk to me let me just like catch my breath and, and there's actually a part on this set where it, everything stops it's a surprise in the song it's supposed to be the song's supposed to keep going but it stops and then there's like a little bass part and it's it just like complete silence and the, the crowd goes crazy and that's like my that's like my zen of the, like all day I wait for that one that one like 15 seconds yeah cause we're like playing and it like we surprise everybody so everyone cheers and the lights go out and I'm just like I close my eyes I'm just like oh this is like, this is like this is my favorite place to be, like, because it's quiet and it's like, <laughs> comes back in and it explodes. So, so. Do you feel like as a band then that you guys have attained the goals that originally you set out for yourselves, or do you feel like is there way bigger stuff that you have uh, planned? Just I mean goals, like you know, what's the dreams now? Like what's the? See, that's the hardest. Everybody says I want to go on tour. I want to yeah, do this. Yeah. Well, you're doing that. So what's the next? Like what's the next big thing? See, that's the hardest thing because like all our bucket, all our <laughs> bucket <hard> questions. <laughs> All our bucket lists we like have checked off years ago. So ever since then we're sort of just like We're cool. Yeah, we're just, we're <laughs> we're already happy. Like, if it's over today, I'm like, I all accomplished right. it. I remember our like it's so funny because I talk about this all the time. Like I remember our first bucket list, like it was like we yeah, we got signed and we were going, we were going on our first tour. And we always wanted like road cases because all our stuff was in like cardboard boxes. <laughs> and our first tour, we ordered a ton of road cases and had our logo on and stuff. And we're like, this is all I wanted. And, like that was our first bucket list. So we're like, whoa. And then like, you're like we've made it. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, like, this is, we're set. Yeah. And but there's been so much I never even would have dreamed of in a million years. Like um, we op op we opened up Donington um, main stage download. Never would have thought in my entire life. That what I was that like? God, I want to go to that festival so bad. I can't get over there. I've been to everyone in the States, but not that one. <laughs> yeah, and for them, like, yeah, you're opening up uh, the biggest stage. And, uh, yeah, you guys are first. You guys open up the whole week, and you're like, what? Did you feel like this big when you were on stage? Like, you I was that big on the stage. I was big on the... 
It was there were sixty thousand people in like, as a. Would you say that's like the climax? Like, is that the point when you stood back and you go, "Oh my god, I that's really my this time is time happening." Like this yeah. is. I don't even remember it. That's how crazy it was. Like, I look at videos. I'm like, "You're like it's over." No. <laughs> it was crazy. Like the stage was so big to where I had to like. I didn't even see BJ. Like I had to run. <laughs> I like to run over stage rock, and I'm like, "This is crazy." And, like run back to the middle, and like when you do like the haze, yeah. you hear and there's like a thousand people like, "Oh, like, man, this is real loud." When there's sixty thousand people saying, "Hey," your hair blows back. You're like, "Hey," and it's just, and I just saw so many DVDs growing up, and I'm like, this, and then even like looking at pictures now, it's, it's that was a crazy. That was the top moment in my whole life, but. I guess other bucket lists, it's just crazy because all the bucket lists like playing with the bands we wanted to play with, we've played with them all, and now we're like bros with all our favorite bands. So I think the only band we haven't played with that we really want to is In Flames. Everyone else. Nice. We haven't toured with Lamb of God, we've played a lot of festivals with them, that's another mm -hmm. band we've toured with. But other than that, we've played with all of our favorite bands. <laughs> that's what I always say, like the, the festivals become like that class reunion type of thing it's anymore, crazy. you know, it's yeah. like rock and roll summer camp. <laughs> <And> it's <laughs> wow. awesome. We were talking to Of Mice and Men, because we're like, we're bros with them, and we're sort of like the, the come up artists on this festival, so the bands that are really big on this festival that have been doing it forever, we always joke with them, like, man, five, ten years from now, it's going to be cool, we're all older, and there's going to be younger bands, and we're going to be like, hey, dude, it's like our sixth time, we're going down the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I can't wait, it's going to be the best time. Tattoos. Yeah, yeah, it's been, yeah, yeah, it's chugging beers, playing shows. So what band that you've maybe played with, not played with, like, who are the musicians that you truly, like, admire, that you're just like, they're just great guys, they're doing their damn thing, they're... Uh, my, I think my favorite musician is... And it's crazy because I was he was like my poster boy, like when I was growing up. Like I had posters of him all over my room and everything. It's a poster form of yeah. <laughs> it's like puppy like, loose. Like, <laughs> we did um I'm trying to <laughs> sounds, sounds like a chicken. Sorry. <laughs> sounds crazy. I haven't heard that one in the story yet. Um, <laughs> Bert McCracken from uh, The Used, he's probably my favorite musician. Because he, um... Such an amazing guy. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> when I was growing up, I, like, he was all over my room, like, posters, and, um... I remember, and it's cool because I always think of it now when I meet fans, is... I stood out for... Like, he's, like, the first big artist I met. And I stood out for... <laughs> and I stood out in, uh... Great in the snow for hours to meet him. And he came out finally, and I thought he would just sign stuff and leave. But he like came out with like snacks and hung out with everyone. And was like, "Do you want snacks?" And like I was fourteen, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, like he's even cooler than I thought he was." And then now when I meet kids, because I'll remember that forever. So now when I meet kids, I'm like, Psh. "I'll totally, give, I'll totally give him the time of day." Like, but he like changed my whole life. Like, the crazy thing is though, all that set aside, we played Warped Tour with him, 2012 on the same stage. And then we end up becoming friends, so I'm like freaking out. And then he's like, uh, the first record, or not first, but second record, I had like box full soft arm decks or whatever, whatever, massive. Um, they were playing that, and he, uh, he was like, oh man, you should come up and sing that part for me every night. And I was oh. like, oh. he's like, oh, you need the lyrics? I'm like, I know it all, man. I'm like, I, I, I know it. So I got to do that for the rest of the tour, and that was like. Oh, that's awesome. Like the fourteen year old and my, myself was just was like fangirling out. Like, like what? <laughs> like this is real life. I went from like not being in a band to being in a band, then touring with you and then being like, Hey, come sing with us. I'm just like, This is the craziest thing ever. Like, <laughs> he's probably my favorite artist. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy how the stories, like, they always do stick with fans, though, and yeah. that's the thing. Like, you will always remember, like, whether or not somebody was nice, whether they yeah, were so complete ass, whether they, are, whether they, like, they were not, like... I'll like, give you two minutes, like, you know what I mean? I'm not... I'm busy, but not too busy. Because one day I might need you to sing for me on stage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. What kind of advice would you give to, say, like, a new band coming up? Like, if they wanted to go on tour and they wanted to make all this happen and they wanted to have people standing around the block waiting to come into their show, what would you say to them? Like, what's a really... Mm, I always tell people to um, go with the time, sort of, like, focus on one step at a time. Just a lot of people want to, like, take loans out doing stuff, like, go on tour, but just focus on being, like, the best local band and... They're like the best band in your city and state and just do it one step at a time and there's gonna be like a lot of 
I feel like the biggest thing to keep bands to get to where they want to be is to uh, sort of you have to stick out through all those speed bumps because all of our friend like all of our bands that we're friends with when we were growing up that were ten times better than our band they were like miles ahead of us to becoming what we're doing now but they would just like get on bicker men or like they'd get like a one down time and they would break up and it's just like you gotta go through there's been oh, thousands of times Miss Maz wanted to break up or like nope like we gotta just keep sticking through it and like those are the one you gotta stick through the bumps and just take it one step at a time because it's not gonna be easy at all you just try 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 until you can't try anymore and that's basically being in a band there's never like a check your set because <laughs> <laughs> people are so ADD and people need material all the time that you just try and try and try, try yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm gonna thank you so much for taking a few minutes out oh, to speak with us. I appreciate it. Do you have any final messages to give to our viewers? Um, we're touring the U.S. a lot in 2015, <laughs> which we haven't done in a long time. So, uh, if you guys are coming out, come hang out. Stay metal. See you guys soon. Awesome. Thank yeah. you.